guys, welcome back to my channel. Mermaid Nina here. Well, I thought we would switch courses a little bit and talk about a different Disney theme park. Who wants to talk about Disneyland, yeah? Hopefully you do. <laughs> I thought I would do a top 10 planning video for Disneyland. I have so many planning videos uh, for Disney World and you guys love them and I absolutely love that. But for those of you who go to Disneyland, I thought I would put together a list for you guys. Now, something you might not know is Disneyland is my favorite park. I was born and raised in California. Disneyland is my home park. It is where I learned to love Disney. So I absolutely love going to Disneyland, talking about Disneyland, booking Disneyland as a travel agent. It is absolutely my favorite. So should we give it a try? Should we do a top 10 planning video for Disneyland? Let's get to it. So a few things you need to know is A, Disneyland is in California, in Anaheim, California. I am not talking about Disney World in Orlando, Florida. This is Disneyland in California. Now, Disney World and Disneyland are not the same thing. There are similar things, right, because it's both Disney but they are very much different. In fact, if you wanna learn about the differences between Disney World and Disneyland, you should look at my uh, top 10 comparison video where I actually talk about the differences between the two parks. But should we get started? All right, like usual guys, in no particular order, number one thing you should know about when planning or preparing or thinking about booking a trip to Disneyland is that Disneyland is made up of two theme parks. Disney World is four, Disneyland is two. And they also have a downtown shopping area known as Downtown Disney. And they have three Disneyland resorts all together in a small little area. It's so small that they are all walking close to each other. Disneyland does not use big buses. There are no buses that take you from park to park or park to resort or resort to whatever. Disneyland is so compact and so small compared to Disney World that you can walk anywhere that you might want to go. Absolutely love that. Like I said, there are two theme parks. They are Disneyland the park. This is gonna be the one that is most similar to Disney World's Magic Kingdom. This is the castle park with kind of those classic Disney rides. The next park here is Disney's California Adventure. This is very much Hollywood themed. Uh, they have Cars Land, if you like the movie Cars. They have Marvel, a whole Marvel University is at Disneyland and lots of Pixar and more. So that is uh, the two parks there. So when going to Disneyland, I get a lot of people who say, well, how many days should I be going? Just two days, two parks? Can I get both parks done in one day? I like to do Disneyland for at least three to five park days. Even though the parks are on the smaller side compared to Disney World, I do like to take my time and I like to be able to repeat certain things over and over again. Plus the ride lines, you never know, can get kind of long. So yeah, I absolutely love doing the parks at least three for three days, up to five days is my actual preference. But yes, yeah, so absolutely, I would not try to do both parks in one day. You could, but you're missing out on a whole lot of really cool things. But yeah, so that's the first thing you really need to know. Two theme parks, one downtown shopping area, and three resorts all put together that you can walk to and fro as much as you want. Number two, number two thing you need to know here is hopper passes for Disneyland are 100% a must. I will quote every single package for Disneyland with the hopper passes. Why? The parks are basically across the street from each other. Again, no buses needed. They're literally, you see one 
and you can see the other. They're like across the way. It's like walking to your neighbor's house across the street. That is how close you are. You can see the entrance of one when standing at the entrance of the other. Absolutely love hopping at Disneyland. One of the reasons to hop is that they do have early morning hours at Disneyland and one park might have early morning hours and the other park might have early morning hours. They like to switch so you might want to start in one park and then hop to the other depending on all the things, the crowds, dining reservations, parades, fireworks, evening shows, all the things uh, that you may want to experience. It's very convenient to be able to hop, especially when you can start early morning at one park and get a few things done, but you really wanted to focus on the other park for the day because you wanna see those fireworks or whatever the situation is. So yes, 100% get those hopper passes at Disneyland. Number three, dining. So the first thing here, there is no, and I repeat, no meal plan at Disneyland. I cannot tell you how many times I get asked this. In fact, on my Disney World meal plan video, most of the comments on there are, well, does Disneyland have a meal plan? No, no meal plan at Disneyland. However, dining does book 60 days in advance just like at Disney World. However, Disneyland kind of works on its own little schedule and not all the restaurants will be open at 60 days. So even though you can start at 60 days, I like keep looking at 58 days, 57 days, 56 days, because you never know when what you want will pop up. It just kind of Disneyland's kind of on its own little schedule. Also, what you need to know about dining at Disneyland is the quick service at Disneyland is so amazing that I don't really need a sit-down restaurant. I don't need a table service restaurant daily. Definitely not all three times a day. There are many times where I can get by eating the quick service because it is so delicious. Disneyland actually doesn't have as many sit down restaurants as Disney World does. And I think it's for that reason. A lot of the people who go to Disneyland are locals and they just go and grab a quick service. Table service is kind of reserved for when you're celebrating something special. So yeah, there's no need to overly book uh, those table service locations at Disneyland because the quick service itself is so good. Also note, they do have character meals at Disneyland. However, most of them are actually at the Disney resorts. Yep. Next thing, number four here is Genie Plus. Yep, Disneyland also has the skip the line option known as a Genie Plus. It is very similar to Disney World, so I'm not gonna go to the ins and outs about it. Uh, check out my Genie Plus videos for Disney World and you can get the majority of things that you need to know per Disneyland. However, here are a few of the differences, you ready? First, at Disneyland, you can 100% add Genie Plus to your Disneyland vacation package. In fact, I 100% suggest this because it just makes your life easier. You don't have to worry about getting up at a certain point in time and adding it. Just add it to your package, make life easier. The cool thing about uh, Genie Plus over at Disneyland is it includes the photos taken from the photo pass photographers. So for those of you uh, who know about Disney World, it's like including Memory Maker. Absolutely love it. When you get Genie Plus for the day, you also get your ride photos, your character photos, your pictures in front of the castle, all those pictures that the photographers take of you. One big difference that you do need to note here about Genie Plus is at Disney World, you have to make advance plans to get those passes, right? Disneyland, you wake up, you go through the turnstiles, whether using your ticket or your magic band, as soon as you go through the turnstiles, as soon as you enter the park, then you immediately get on your phone and get your first Genie Plus. So none of this waking up early and preparing for it, you wait till you actually physically get in the park and that is when you can get your first pass. And based on the way Disneyland is laid out and how things kind of work out for Genie Plus, a good plan of attack is actually to do the early morning magic hours that Disneyland has, um, to do all those without worrying about your Genie Plus. Meanwhile, you're stacking your passes 
for later in the day because if you get into that park first thing in the morning, which is great for Disneyland Resort guests, right? Just like at Disney World, you do all the big things, then you can save your Genie Plus for later in the day. So absolutely when we go to Disneyland, we will hit certain areas up first, do early morning hours, and plan to stack a Genie Plus for later on the day. So we utilize the walk-on, that's early morning, and Genie Plus skip the line later. You also definitely wanna check the app for ride options because the ride options at Disneyland are not the same for the ride options at a Disney World. And of course, the price here is a little bit different. Disneyland still has its set price. Uh, it's $25 per person per day, and they also have individual Lightning Lane as well. So yeah, that's just a little tidbit about Genie Plus over at Disneyland. If I get enough people interested in Disneyland, I can do its own Genie Plus video over at Disneyland. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Number five here is the parade. So yes, Disneyland the park has the big parade. It's called the Magic Happens Parade. Um, it actually runs twice. Right now, of course, you gotta check the app and make sure, cause situations depending, right? It can always change. Right now the parade runs at 3.30 and at 6.30. And the best spots to watch this parade uh, per Disneyland Park is of course the castle or the main street, right? Just like at Disney World. Also in front of It's a Small World, there's usually a huge uh, section of people that watch uh, directly in front of It's a Small World. And also the Matterhorn bobsleds, there's another good uh, viewing spot there for the parade. So depending on where you are, when you hear the music and you're ready to watch the parade, those are three really great viewing areas for you. Number six. Now I said that the Disneyland Resort has three resorts. Did you know these resorts actually come with perks? There are reasons why you want to stay on property at the Disneyland Resort. Uh, if you want to know the ins and outs of these different uh, resorts, make sure you check out my Disneyland hotel video. I actually showcase all three resorts for you so you can kind of see the difference and know which one you might want to book. But their names are Disney's Grand California. And this is the bigger resort, the more expensive resort. It is so close to the theme parks that you can actually just step out the door of the resort and you're in Disney's California Adventure. That's how close it is. You just boop, take a step and you're in the theme park. Absolutely amazing. Next one is the Disneyland Resort. That is the original hotel that was on property. Of course, it has been changed quite a bit. The third one here is the Paradise Pier Hotel. Now, Paradise Pier is currently getting a makeover. It is going through transitions uh, to become the very first Pixar-themed hotel known as Pixar Place. So those are the three resorts that are Disney resorts here on Disneyland property. But here's what you need to know. First thing is early morning hours. Early morning hours are always a huge perk, but especially at Disneyland because it's a smaller situation. So that means you have less people to compete with when you do early morning hours. There's a good chance that you can actually get two to three really big popular rides out of the way just by doing early morning hours. Also, like I said, they are walking close to the parks. Paradise Pier actually has an entrance point uh, through Disney's Grand Californian. Disney's Grand Californian, boop, you walk out the door, you're there. Disneyland Hotel, you have a little bit of a walk, but you're walking through downtown Disney, so it's not even that bad of a walk. In fact, you can stop for Starbucks on your way to the theme park, no big worry. Absolutely love being so walking close to the parks. I don't have to deal with a bus. I don't have to deal with a tram. I don't have to deal with any of it. I just walk. In fact, I can walk and eat as I go. Absolutely love it's so close because when you have littles, it's easy to break for a nap because you're doing early morning hours, right? You get up super early, you do the things, you have lunch, and then you take the kids back for a nap. Or us adults, yeah, we need naps too. Or perhaps you wanna kick back and go to the pool for a couple of hours. You don't have to worry for a bus. You don't have to wait in line and you're like, are we ever gonna get there? It's just a couple steps away. Absolutely love that. And of course the Disney resorts are known for fun pools. 
really, really good dining. And yes, they have some shopping there as well. And like I said, two of those resorts, you can walk through downtown Disney as you walk back. So yeah, get a little shopping and eating in as you take your break. Number seven thing to know when you're planning for Disneyland are the evening shows, right? So Disneyland, the park, has fireworks known as Wondrous Journey with fireworks and very similar to Magic Kingdom. It's a fireworks show with projections. However, there are three different areas for you to see the fireworks to the point where I go. I will actually watch the fireworks three nights so that I can see them from all the three different vantage points, right? So here are the three different areas to watch the fireworks is obviously right in front of the castle. That's where you're gonna see the traditional fireworks with the projections on the castle and all that good stuff. You can also watch it on It's a Small World. Sometimes they even do projections on the facade of It's a Small World because It's a Small World at Disneyland is on the outside. So there's a lot of building area there for them to do projections. And you can also see it on a Rivers of America, which is their water area. And they actually spray up water and they do the projections on the water. And of course with music and fireworks and oh my gosh, it's absolutely lovely. In fact, last time I went, I preferred the Halloween fireworks over Rivers of America. I preferred it over the castle, like I liked it better <laughs> over the water than I did on the castle. So you just never know. But of course you wanna check the app because fireworks actually don't happen nightly during certain times of the year. Because Disneyland is so close to schools and houses, I mean, it's just a nook little cranny inside the Anaheim area. They do have to be careful with noises depending on what's going on, the season and all those great things. So always check the app. And sadly, Disneyland the park used to have Fantasmic, but due to some technical difficulties, some fire that's been happening, usually related to Maleficent, uh, they've officially decided to close Fantasmic until spring 2024. So until then, Fantasmic is sadly not happening, but just note that Disneyland Park does have a Fantasmic. Now, Disney's California Adventure has an amazing evening show known as World of Color. It is absolutely fantastic. They have fireworks and projections and music and water sprays from the, the water area and they do these projections on the water and uh, I think I cry every single time I see them. Absolutely love World of Color. But what you need to know that World of Color is very popular. It's outside, it is all standing space. And the best way to do it is to get a virtual queue. They have virtual queues at Disneyland. You can get a virtual queue for World of Color. I highly suggest it. Uh, you can't always pick your boarding time and the color and area you'll be standing in, but absolutely get that virtual queue for World of Color. Or if you want, you can do a World of Color dining package or dessert package where you pay to eat dinner or have dessert and with it, you get a spot to stand in for World of Color. You definitely want to do one of the two. You don't want to just assume you can just stand in line because the people will wait for World of Color for over an hour. It's easier just to get the virtual queue, I promise. Number eight, I talked about it a little bit. Uh, Disneyland has an app. 100% you want it. You need to get it. You need to know it you need to use it. In fact, you can watch my Disney World app tutorial video to get an idea of how the app works because the Disney World app and the Disneyland app are pretty much the same, except obviously one has Disney World components and one has Disneyland components. So if you watch that video, you'll get an idea of how to use the Disneyland apps. And of course, just like at Disney World, the number one thing you need to use and know and love is Tipboard. Tipboard is 100% your friend. It needs to be your go-to area in the app. It's where you're gonna learn about wait times, where you can get dining, it's how you get your Genie Plus, and it's how you know what's going on in the parks, what's currently closed, what's shut down, what's opened, what's available. It's all in Tipboard on the Disneyland app. Number nine here is the monorail. Yes, Disneyland Resort has a monorail, 
but it's a little bit different than Disney World. Uh, the monorail at Disneyland is, yes, kind of a ride, but it's also a way to get in to the park, the Disneyland park. The monorail actually goes inside the park and not at the main entrance. So usually when you enter the theme park, you have to enter the main entrance. But what if you want to see or do something that's in the center of the park? Sometimes going in via the monorail is a way to skip some time. So anyway, two points of entry or exit per this monorail is either downtown Disney near the Disneyland Hotel. That's one way to get in and out of the monorail or Tomorrowland inside the Disneyland park, kind of near the Nemo submarine ride, is the other point of entry. So between Tomorrowland and the downtown Disney area, that's where the monorail enters and exits. Um, what's your perk here? It's a great way to get inside the park really, really fast. You don't have to wait till you get to the main gate and then you gotta walk over. It gets you right in via monorail. It's a great way if you want to come and go from that area, especially midday, if you need to take a nap, you want to take a break. Sometimes you worked your way halfway through the park, you end up in Tomorrowland. That's a good way to kind of get back to your resort, take the monorail, take your break, and then come back and finish the park. But one thing you 100% need to know is you are going inside the park, which means you need a park ticket. It's not like a Disney World where it just goes to resorts and you don't actually go inside a park. This goes inside the park. So if you don't have a park ticket, you cannot ride the monorail. And the park ticket is for Disneyland Park, not DCA, Disneyland Park. And of course the views here through the monorail are spectacular. You get to see views of downtown Disney. You wanna get an idea of where you wanna shop and eat? Yep, taking a monorail's bird's eye view is absolutely spectacular. You get really good views of the Disney's Grand Californian Resort and also a little bit of a DCA. So yes, absolutely love the monorail. It's my original monorail. And back in the day, it was actually connected to the Disneyland Hotel. So it used to be the transportation way to get from the Disneyland Hotel to the theme park. They've had to adjust it a little bit, some construction there, uh, but still absolutely love the monorail over at Disneyland. Now, number 10 thing you should know when planning or preparing a vacation to the Disneyland Resort is um, airports. Yep. There are two airports you can actually use uh, per the Disneyland Resort. That is if you're not local, if you're not driving. Uh, one is SNA, the Santa Barbara Airport. The other one is LAX. Now, SNA is 100% closer. In fact, it's the preferred airport when going to Disneyland, but sadly, sometimes LAX just has, because it's larger, has better flight options. Sometimes it's cheaper. Sometimes it has better flight time. So depending on your situation, you definitely want to research LAX and SNA and pick the one that uh, has the best flight times for you. Either way, whether you do LAX or SNA, uh, the way to get to a Disneyland is usually to hire an Uber or a taxi. It can be a little costly or to hire a shuttle company that will take you uh, to and from. There is no specific Disneyland resort shuttle or service. You're kind of on your own there to figure out how to get from the airport to Disneyland. You can also rent a car at the airport, but of course, once you get to Disneyland, you do have to pay for parking. At least I'm pretty sure you do. There is not free parking at Disneyland like there is at Disney World. So anyway, guys, that is my top 10 uh, planning tips and tricks or advice or things you need to know when deciding if you want to head over to Disneyland. Like I said, this is in Cala. California. Let me know what you think. Did you enjoy this video? Do you want more videos on Disneyland? Because I can do learn the maps. I can do top 10 things to do and know about and all that good stuff. So let me know in the comments if you want more Disneyland because I can absolutely do that. I Like I said, Disneyland's my home park. It's what I love. It's my favorite. Absolutely have no problem making more Disneyland uh, 
videos for you guys. Like I said, let me know in the comments. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications. A like this video. And like I said, comment. If you want more Disneyland, let me know. Did you like this video? Do you want more information? Let me know. As always, please, please, please share my content. If you know anyone thinking about going to Disney World, send them those videos. If you know anyone who's going to Disneyland, send them this video. Just please, as much as you can, share on social media. I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was the video you guys were looking for, especially if Disneyland is on the horizon for you. So yes, absolutely let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, mahalo for watching. Nina, out.